welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumu Kahua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumu Kahua Theater. I am very excited to introduce our guest to you today. His name is Ryan Okinaka, Oki, as we lovingly call him in the theater community. He is a playwright, his brand spanking new playwright, and his play, I Hula, is going to be presented at Kuwakuhua Theater. Welcome, Oki. Thank you very much. Should I call you Ryan since this is an official I, I feel like the universe is leading me toward just being Ryan, so you can call me okay, Ryan. Okay, all yes. right. I feel more comfortable I with you. I should just you. embrace it already. <laughs> I, <laughs> Okay, Ryan. Yes. This is the first. Is this the first script you have written? Uh, this is my first full-length script. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I wrote a couple like ten-minute shows in in college, but oh. that's about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Did you? So you studied playwriting? In I did school? not. I did not. No. <laughs> you just wrote them on yeah, your own. Yeah, I just wrote them on my own time. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't take. I took a creative writing class, but even at the time when I was writing. At LCC, when I was doing theater, I had, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just like, oh, I'm going to write a script today. And I yeah, did. <laughs> what makes a person say, I'm going to write a script? I, I don't know. You know, I was doing improv at the time. And I was really getting into improv. And I guess at one point, I was like, oh, when we do improv scenes, I'm pretty much creating dialogue on the spot. And I think that's the hardest part in playwriting is writing is creating dialogue because mm. everyone can come up with plots and stories and whatnot. But I think I feel like the hardest part is, you know, creating characters and figuring out what that character would say. But you know, we do that in, in improv all the time. So right. to me, it just kind of came naturally. I just started writing scenes. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna write. Have you written other? Have done other creative writing? Um, I went to a creative writing class where I I wrote a couple of stories that I really liked. Um, recently, back in uh, last year in the fall, I wrote uh, somewhat of a musical thing for the Gay Men's Chorus of Honolulu. Uh, I wrote like scene interludes that kind of like tied together all the songs. Uh. So yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And are you you're a member of the Gay Men's Chorus? Um, I took a break. Oh, yeah, the okay. moment that my play got picked up to be produced, I told myself I was going to like focus this year on to making sure that this play would be absolutely perfect by oh, the time it okay. opened. Yeah, so I kind of took a back seat on the chorus for a little bit. That's so. probably a wise idea. Yeah. So the, uh, Honolulu does have a really wonderful gay men's chorus. They do, yeah. yes. And they are con their concert's coming up too in December 11th, so oh. their holiday concert. Shout out yeah. to the Honolulu gay men's chorus. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you just then you decided, I want to write this full length how did that come about? Uh, well, <laughs> that's an interesting story. Um, my brother is a hula, is a kumu hula, and he has a halal. And um, he asked me one day. He knew that I had, you know, the, he knew that my passion was theater. And he asked me one day that uh, he was doing his hula huike, and he just asked me to create a play that would uh, interlude his hula numbers. So, you know, basically most huikis are, you know, the, the girls will go up and they'll do a hula number and then an MC will come out and be like, okay, so the next number we're going to perform is entitled blah, 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 and this is what it's about, here's the composer, you know, so he wanted to do something a little different, so he asked me to create a story uh, and uh, he gave me a set list of songs that he was going to do and that's it. And he told me just create something. So uh, I did. So I took uh, all the songs that he had. Uh, I, create, I created this story about um, this girl who, for whatever reason, uh, let go of her Hawaiian cultural roots and moved to the mainland. And um, her grandmother passes away, and she comes back for the funeral. And one of the things that the grandmother used to do was uh, take her kids to different locations in Oahu and tell them stories about that place. She was a storyteller. Mm. Uh, and the, the point of the huike was uh, he was doing different songs about different areas of Oahu. Oh, so that's how nice it, yeah, tied idea. In, yeah. So uh, when she came back for the funeral, then the cousins decided to do this tribute to their grandmother by doing exactly what she did and going to different, the different locations that she would take them and telling the stories. And the girls would come out and do the hula about Eva Beach or, or Hali Eva or Waikiki. Um, 
And you know, I kind of wrote that story as kind of a tribute to my father who had passed away that same year. So it was really beautiful. I mean, we pulled out all the shots for this show um, and it, you know, we had it uh, set to be performed in Waikiki. Uh, and we had brought in staging, lights, audio. I think we had 300 people who bought tickets to come see the show. Um, I called in all of my theater connections and I brought in my friends to be the actors and we rehearsed everything and it was a beautiful show. We started the show and literally like 30 minutes in, uh, they called it uh, a tsunami evacuation on Waikiki. Oh, no. <laughs> and we had to just stop right there. And it was like heartbreaking. So uh, that story. And you it's, never got to redo it. We never got to redo it. Yeah. Oh. So I mean, at that point, I was just like, oh, well, I guess that story was just never meant to be told. Uh, and then uh, two years later, I just I sat in a Starbucks and I pulled out my iPad and I typed in the title I Hula, and this is what became of it. Wow, so, it, that's really <laughs> cool. I'm glad that we had the show happening at, at Kumukuhua, but I want to go back for just a moment yes. because why wouldn't you do the Hoike? Why wouldn't you um, work you know, on resurrecting that? I think I looked at what that was, and I really liked the, the idea of that story, and I think it worked for the Hoike. Uh, it worked for the way that my brother had set up his show, but it wasn't exactly the story that I wanted to tell. Oh. Um, you know, the, the heart of that story, I suppose, was this character named Pono, who for whatever reason um, felt like her, her connection to her culture was disconnected or disjointed for whatever reason. Um, so I wanted to explore that idea of of why it was mm. and then uh, so then I had that you know so I had that central story and then you know I kind of had this idea that I really wanted to write love letters to all of my friends uh, all my female friends you know and I so I, I would pick different people like Jamie Bradner you know for instance who's Kumu's residential white girl actor <laughs> you know? young young white girl. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry yes, yes. <laughs> Young my god. Um, but you know, like I would like I would look at Jamie and I would pull out all the things that I love about her, you know, and then I would pick the one thing that I felt maybe she she struggled with, you know, and I the one thing I, I took was acceptance, being that she's a white girl and and she performs at a very local theater, you know. So I think one of the struggles that she has as an actor who likes to perform at Kumuku Theater is not being able to get the parts, you know, because she's not the right type. Which is interesting because, you know, if I were to go to New York, I'd have the exact same. Just about <laughs> any other theater, yeah. you would have the problem. That's one of the things that I love about mm -hmm. Kumukuhu, even though I've been here five years, there's been one role for yeah. me. That <laughs> it was a good role, though. It was a good role. It was, it was a good role. play. Yeah, you worked that role. <laughs> oh, that. You can come back. Uh, so that's really interesting. They are very beautiful roles that mm -hmm. you've written for the women. Um, do you feel like you have a relationship with each of those characters? I do, I think. Uh, I, I mean, and I hope anyone who comes to see it will, will feel the same way. Like, you know, I deal with body issues, I deal with acceptance, I deal with um, the idea of coming of age and, and understanding that, you know, this world that we live in moves so quickly and if we blink and we don't pay attention to it, then it's we're going to die one day and we're going to regret every, every decision that we've ever made, you know? so. Um, all of those things is, is things that we always go through. And as far as like um, the character themselves, I, I mean, I put my voice into each one of these girls, I feel like. Uh, so every time I hear them talk, I'm like, oh yeah, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. I, uh, yeah, I feel like the, um, the, in the advertising, we have a lot of information about, uh, we've, we've used this idea that it's an, you know, an iPhone world, mm -hmm. but the halal is, a, is tradition, that, mm -hmm. and where does that fit into yeah. it? But I really feel like the underlying message of all of it is being yourself mm -hmm. and loving, you know, you love your family yeah. because they are themselves, sometimes yeah. in spite of it, but, yeah, absolutely. you know, because it too. I think mm -hmm. it's a really beautiful message to it, and it's kind of surprising that it's coming out of someone in his first <laughs> uh, full-length play. What? Mm -hmm. Um, did you have help with the script? I did. Um, so, you know, I wrote it and I, I, I had uh, it finished in uh, first draft, you know, and uh, I looked at it and, I, you know, I, I, ha I was fortunate enough to work with a lot of great writers who uh, love and support me, I suppose, <laughs> because, you know, I literally just like, 
emailed a bunch of my friends, Lee Cataluna, Mona Z. Smith, who's in New York, um, and I just messaged them, like, will you read my play and tell me what you think? And um, I, you know, I was just kind of expecting them to just say, oh, yeah, it's good, keep going, you know? Mm -hmm. But I sent it to them, and they both sent back, like, pages of, like, of different advice and criticism and uh, great, like, just words of encouragement and things that I can work on, things that I would never have thought. You know, oh. so it's just really helped me to develop myself and to to really think about how I create characters, how I, you know, tie in the storylines and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So I had a lot of support, and I I mean even beyond just the writing, I you know once my play got word that it was being produced, just people from all over my life just started to call me and and, and see like what they could do to support me. You know, and uh, I look at it now, it's like. I did one show at Monoa Valley, the Monoa Valley Theater called Once Upon One Other Time. And uh, literally, like, my whole crew and half my cast is from that one show oh. because we were so tight and we were such a family. But they all just came and they just surrounded me with their support and love. And now they're just doing whatever they can to support this endeavor. So it's just really, like, heartwarming and it's nice. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That is a wonderful family story, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, <laughs> it comes itself. together. Mm -hmm. And I'm amazed when I hear about um, so many playwrights have the same story that when they were starting, they would send their script to a very well established kumu of theirs, mm -hmm. uh, and the support just rushes in. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I think there's the fear that someone's going to look at it and be like, oh, I don't want to have to waste my time with this. Mm -hmm. But no, they probably because they experienced the same thing when they were coming up, mm -hmm. they're they're giving back yeah, and absolutely. Uh, they must believe in you if they would want to do that too. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go to our first break okay. here. Uh, the show is I Hula that we're talking about. The playwright is Ryan Okinaka and you're watching Center Stage. We'll be right back. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, it well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. It's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on Think Tech's show. Sorry. Hi, we're back. We are live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. If you would ever like to join us in our downtown studio audience here in Pioneer Plaza, you may do so. Just email Jay, that's J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.com, and he will hook you up. If you or someone you know really should be on this show talking about the process behind your art, I would love to know about that. You can find me on Facebook, Donna.Blanchard, um, or you can tweet me at it's all about Donna, of course it is. We're talking with Ryan <laughs> <laughs> Okinaka, um, whose show opens, it runs um, basically through the month of November at Kumukuhu Theater, a little bit into December. We're almost sold out for your opening weekend already. Yay. <laughs> Exciting, yeah. Uh, you have a lot of support rolling in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a beautiful subject matter. So it's really nice to see that. I always feel like theater is, theater is for our our audiences, mm -hmm. but we have to admit that it is also for us yeah, too. Absolutely. You know what we do on stage or backstage mm -hmm. or pre-stage. You know, yeah. it feeds us mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So let's talk about the process of actually mounting this show. What, uh, let's go back even earlier. Okay. You submitted the script yes. to our artistic director, Harry mm -hmm. Wong, mm -hmm. and were there any changes? Did he request any changes in the script initially? Um, not at the time when he said that we, they were going to do it, yeah. Well, he was directing, so I'm sure he already had ideas of what he wanted to do with the script. Um, I, I mean, when it, once it got picked up, I definitely knew that the second act needed a lot more development. Um, you know, because I had, for whatever, I, I spent like two years writing the first, the first acts only, 
and I was very happy with the first act. Like I, I, had, I felt like I set up where the girls needed to go, and then I kind of left it at the point where okay, now they need to be, now they need to start transforming. Mm -hmm. And then you know, um, I spent the first three months of this year just knocking out the second act. Um, so by the time I had finished the whole thing, I had, I pretty much knew that I had completed A, B, and C, you know. But I was just still like worried about B and C, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So that was a, I, and I think Harry also agreed. Um, that's the only comment he gave me that was that the second act needed a little bit more work. So once it got picked up, I put in a little bit more work into the second act, and I think now we have a pretty good, well concise show. Thanks yeah. to Harry. Yeah. <laughs> well, and very often on a well, and you had some read throughs. Yes. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, and very that's that's just a part of the process mm -hmm. to hear it read yeah. is different mm -hmm. to hear actors what how actors react mm -hmm. to the words that yeah. you've got. Because, you know, like, one of my first worries was that, you know, here I am, a, you know, a young man trying to write for very different women, you know? And I, that was one of my questions to Lee, Lee Cataluna, was like, oh, you know, like, I don't know if I know how to write women. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if I know how to write men, you know? But <laughs> so, so, I mean, like, I think that was my first uh, worry was that, Putting it out there, will the girls when they read it, you know, feel like, oh yeah, these are, this is this sounds like a woman, or this sounds like someone, I, something I would say, yeah. or even like the the struggles that they go through with the with the with the body issues or um, the acceptance, whether that would be translatable if if I did it um, sensitively enough, so that they would feel that it was done authentically. Um, was a couple of some of my worries, but once they started reading it, and then once I heard what they had to say, I'm like, oh, okay. I think I did okay. <laughs> yeah, because you wrote it with love for yeah. the for those characters. Mm -hmm. I think that shows. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of times. Um, some of our playwrights are not even present when a when the play is being mounted for the first time, or mm -hmm. they will come and you know be able to be a part of a few of the rehearsals. Yeah. But you've been a part of this process. Almost all uh, since the auditions, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. How has that been for you? Uh, that's been great. You know, I, I tell a lot of people that I'm, you know, I'm very slowly trying to be the local Tyler Perry. Because <laughs> I want nice. to do it all, you know. I want to be, I, I want to write my shows, direct it, and star in it. No, maybe not. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you do. I kind of do. You could do that. I kind of do. But, um, you know, it's great. Yeah, I feel like... Um, I, I told myself that I would approach this, this whole uh, process uh, w with a lot of, I guess, fluidity and openness, you know? So, so when I, when, from day one, you know, I told Harry, like, you do what you want to do. And if I say no, I say no. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> up, like, he, I, there was a very clear mutual understanding between him and also my brother, who's the hula choreographer. Between the three of us, knowing that, you know, I think this, we all were in agreement that the story was straightforward and that we didn't want to affect the story, but how we told that story had a lot of, like, room for uh, changes, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, I mean, I was just enjoying sitting back and seeing those, those things evolve and, and change. Um, I think as an actor and as a director and... Yeah, you know, I guess now as a playwright, you know, I, I understand it from all three three sides of the page. You know, as an actor, I want to be able to be free to explore the character however I want to play it, and not let you know a playwright come in and be like, no, you have to say it this way. You know, so I wouldn't want that. So I would, I did, it. and it was weird because you know, I guess because I was there every day, the girls would come up to me and they would always ask like, oh, okay, like, how do you hear this person saying this? Oh. And I would never answer. I would be like, oh, like how you're saying it sounds like how you should be saying it. Because, um, you know, one of the things I told the girls early on when they had first got cast, I told them, like, I, I created these characters to be very real girls who go through very real issues. And I'm asking you for a lot to be able to dig deep, dig deep into their own selves and to expose themselves in the way that I'm asking them to do it. You know, that's I, and I told them, like, I want it to be fun. Because if it were me, if I was an actor, like, I would love to just you know, dig right into a really meaty character and like rip my ribs out and expose my heart to the <laughs> stage, you know. We often don't um, find ourselves in cast in a lot of roles like that. So when I was creating, I wanted to make sure that I was giving these girls these opportunities to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it was a very great experience. I think 
there was very little that I had issues with as far as like changes. All the changes that were being made um, just completely evolved and enhanced the show in ways I have never, I wouldn't even have even dreamed of, you know? Oh, nice. Because, yeah, so it's just been really great, yeah. <laughs> I think that when you're working with a new script, uh, uh, and Harry is very careful to make sure that directors are paired with playwrights uh, appropriately mm -hmm. so that they are able to deal with those scripts as they need to be. Yeah. Um, because sometimes changes do need to be made. Mm -hmm. And it's very different than if you're doing a Sam Shepard piece, you're not going to question those words. Mm -hmm. That you are going to figure out how to make those words work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we do world premieres of shows like this, um, it, that, that onus is not on the actor. Mm -hmm. It is more on the director to work sort of liaise between the actor and the playwright mm -hmm. to figure out does the script need to change? Does the actor need to work harder? Does, you know, does the playwright need to go back yeah, uh, to work on it a little bit more? It's mm -hmm. a very different process. Yeah. I find a lot of comfort in one time I was doing a Beth Henley play, mm -hmm. Graceland, oh, okay. and our director had to call her only because she references um, a song that's on the other side of one of his, one of Elvis's songs, 45s. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the other side, and we need to know it because we wanted to play it. Yeah. So we called Beth Henley, not to change anything, but mm -hmm. just to ask. But even um, the work of figuring out w why an actor is saying what they're saying, mm -hmm. that's, that's part of the joy of being an actor. That's yeah. part of the work. So I'm glad that you let them have that discovery mm -hmm. on their own. Because they might have also felt as though they needed to involve you in the process. Mm -hmm. And it's good that... Sounds like you had a really great relationship yes. with them and you're happy with the results. Yes, absolutely. We have a, a preview this evening. Are mm -hmm. you nervous? Um, excited? I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, every night, so I, it's it's in that it's in that magic moment, right? This is the magic era of theater where like everything just slowly starts to magically start to come together. Because, you know, we ran it through it on Sunday, and, I mean, Sunday was a 12-hour day. We did tech and costumes and incorporated set pieces and, and, and props, you know, and it was just a really long day. And by the end of it, we had done a full run, and, you know, I went home, and I was like, oh, my God, like, what are we doing? Like, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> but then, you know, and then we all came back on Monday night, and it was just, like, everyone just jumps, like, miles ahead. And, and this, again, like, last night. So, you know, every night that goes by, I'm just more and more, like, just flabbergasted about how this is all becoming, like, beautifully perfect. Yeah. You know? So I think every night that goes by, I, I start to get a little less nervous and a little bit more excited. Um, because, you know, the, the girls are starting to take the stories and starting to take the characters all on their own. And you start to see the cast start to slowly take the show for themselves, which is, like, a great moment, right? Um, to see them own it. And it just becomes their story. And, and um, they just need an audience. You know? So that's what I'm excited for, is just to give them an audience to perform yeah. it in front of. Yeah. Yeah. So at, uh, we'll run the show for a minimum of five weeks. Mm -hmm. Are you going to watch it? Do you want to be there? Because it um, will evolve. It will yes, continue to uh -huh. evolve. Well, you know, such as Kumu, um, we all wear multiple hats. Uh, I think I stepped on a stage manager. <laughs> Your stage manager. I didn't even know it. You're stage managing yes, your own I show. Am. <laughs> you so, really are yeah. doing it all. Like uh, Jamie had commented on one of my Facebook posts today, and she's like, "Oh, you're such a great uh, playwright, AD, prop master, stage manager." And I'm like, <laughs> "Oh my god, is that really what I'm doing?" All this oh, stuff so in? you're staying. Uh, you're staying in it. When I began directing, it I had to just remove myself and uh, stay, you know, see the first weekend of the mm -hmm. show and maybe come back later in the run. But yeah. other than that, I had to remove myself and allow the stage manager, mm -hmm. normally at that point, takes over the show and mm -hmm. allow them to. Stage manager's job is to just make sure that it stays within the general confines yeah. of opening night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so now it's your responsibility to make sure they stay in line. Yep. Yeah with all of that. They and will. who better? Who better than me? We yeah. can't get very many playwrights <laughs> to take those two roles, but yeah. who better to have it to make sure that the integrity remains yeah. of the show? Not that that would ever be no, an, an issue with, with, with that cast <laughs> in particular. 
<laughs> What's next for you after you finish stage managing your own show? Uh, you know, I don't know. I have a couple ideas. I, I, I told myself that I was going to wait until after opening night to see if I even have a future as a writer, you know, because I'm like, oh, like I could open the show and people could be like, oh, who, what does this guy think he's doing? Um, I doubt that will happen. That's but, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I still want to just keep going the way that I've been. You know, I never want to pigeonhole myself into one facet of art. Um, you know, I, I, that's just been my MO since the beginning. I've always been a, I've always acted and I've always tried to direct when I wanted to direct and I've always tried to write when I felt like I needed to write. Um, so I'll just keep continually doing that. You know, I'll probably do a show next year and when I have free time, I'll start writing again. Um, but yeah, who knows? You could uh, be our next tour manager or come help me write grant proposals because <laughs> yeah, you, you haven't done either of those I yet. Did, yeah. <laughs> Such as <laughs> such as Kumu, it's, a, it's just a matter of time, right? <laughs> yeah. So the script that you wrote, here's something that I always find interesting about playwrights, because I don't have that, like, genetically, I don't have that within me. I've never felt like, I need to write a play. Mm -hmm. um, th I, I understand how the organic process behind the evolution of this one, but do you feel like there's another story that's tugging at you that needs to be told? Um, yeah, you know... Of course. <laughs> yeah, we all, I mean, I have a couple of ideas. You know, it's funny, a lot of my urges to write stems from either my urge to direct something that I, or my, I guess my, it comes from an urge to want to either perform something or, or see it being done directorially. You know, so like for this show, I, I always want to do like heart-wrenching emotional scenes where I just get to rail on someone, you know, because it's just so therapeutic for actors to be able to yeah. do that. Um, so like a lot of the scenes in this show came from that urge to just be like, oh, okay, what can I do so that the actors can just like let go of all their inhibitions and just start yelling at each other, you know? Um, <laughs> so uh, that's, I guess that's kind of how it stems, you know? One, one day I'll wake up and be like, oh, you know, I'm, I feel like maybe I should talk about cancer or something, you know, and I'll, oh. I'll use that idea and I'll kind of dive deep into my own life and, and, you know, think about it and a story will just kind of evolve from there. Awesome. Thank you very much for writing the show. I look forward to where you go next. And Thank you. Yeah, let it come out of your na oh. Yeah. Um, I, and I just want to say that the world needs more playwrights. We do not have too many playwrights. We do not have too many plays. Keep going. Everyone needs to keep doing it. Your stories are important. If you write them with honesty, they're going to resonate with other people. And we want to see them, particularly at Kumukuhua Theater. Thank you very much for being on the show. Okay, okay. there's Thank a few people. Thank you for having people. me. Few people here. I'd like to thank our floor manager Nick Sexton, who's right over there. Thanks, Nick. Suri Vendor, our studio overlord, who is in my ear, and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. If you'd like information on the shows at Kumukuhua Theater, please visit kumukuhua.org. We'll see you next week. Bye.